Artificial intelligence is finally here. Well, kind of. So today we're getting our first hands-on look at the future of AI on iPhone thanks to the freshly launched iOS 18.1 beta. And right up front, there are a few caveats if you want to try this out yourself. First, you'll need a spare iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. Or if you're using it on a Mac through the macOS Sequoia developer beta, you'll need a machine with Apple Silicon, so M1 or better. Those are the only models supported at present. Second, you'll need to be somewhere outside of China or the EU, and you'll need to have your iPhone set to the US region with US English as the language. Language. If you can jump through all of those hoops, you'll need to install the iOS 18.1 developer beta. That's not to be confused with iOS 18.0, which is in public beta as of the time we're making this video. Then after installing it, find Siri and Apple Intelligence under Settings and join the waitlist. How long it actually takes to get access after that can vary. First off, it's worth noting right now that we're only getting a small subset of the Apple Intelligence features announced at WWDC in this first preview. Even then, this is still a developer beta, so expect things to break, freeze, or otherwise not work right. That's pretty normal for such an early pre-release version of any operating system. You probably don't want to install this on your only iPhone. With that said, let's jump in. And the first thing you might want to try is the new Siri. There's a new visual effect, of course, this multicolored glow around the outside of the screen, which radiates from the button if you long press it, or flows up from below if you use Hey Siri. It's a neat effect which, because it uses the full dynamic range of your iPhone's display, can appear brighter than the other content on your screen, kind of like an HDR photo or video does. It gives you a way to visually differentiate between the Siri overlay and your apps working underneath. And Apple's actually done a lot of work throughout the UI to use this glowing colored light to signify that you're interacting with an AI feature. It's a pretty smart piece of design work and visually builds on what we'd seen in previous iOS versions for features like name drop. You can also type to Siri with a double tap on the area where the gesture bar normally lives. This glowy keyboard will spring to life, complete with predictive segments here to quickly get you to the thing that you might want to do. Siri is now context aware too, something we've seen in the Google Assistant for quite a few years now. So if you ask it a follow up question, it already knows the relevant context from any previous question you might have asked. What's the weather like in Edinburgh right now? What about next Wednesday? Looks like it will be cloudy in Edinburgh on Wednesday. Daytime temperatures will hover around 62 degrees. Like the rest of Apple intelligence, the new Siri is very much work in progress. And if you ask for things like directions, it'll know the correct app to load, but might not always launch into the correct activity within it. Same deal with asking it to pick out your photos. Instead, right now, you just get generic photos from the web. Show me my photos of gray cats. But it's enough to give you an idea of how it'll eventually work and the on-device processing for voice is nice and fast. So what is working pretty well is the natural language processing. For example, if you trip over your words or correct yourself, Siri, even in its current non-final form here, is smart enough to know what you mean. Okay, show me walking directions to get there. Actually, make that driving directions. Getting driving directions to Edinburgh? There are a bunch of writing and summarization tools that use Apple intelligence, and the easiest place to show this off is in the Notes app. You can proofread for grammatical accuracy and other corrections, but one of the more entertaining options is the Style Rewriter, letting you change your text to a friendlier or more professional tone. And you can also trim down the fat and generate a more concise version, or pull out information into a bulleted list or a table if you like. It's all handled from directly within iOS, so in theory this should work in pretty much any app with a large text field. And AI summaries have also been introduced in a bunch of apps like Mail here to turn a lengthy email into a quick paragraph that sums everything up. And you can also do this in Safari within reader mode to condense an entire article of a few thousand words into just the key takeaways. In the phone app, iOS can also record your calls with an appropriate warning to the other party, of course, and transcripts of these can be saved directly within the Notes app. And from this transcript, Notes will automatically generate a call summary as well using the same AI summary technology. And the same AI trickery can be roped in to help you out on the lock screen too, to summarize a lengthy text chain and just give you the TLDR if you're catching up later. A neat way to save you scrolling through a bunch of messages if you just want the gist of what's going on. And the iPhone lock screen is also becoming smarter about what notifications it can surface, with Apple intelligence built into any focus mode that you tell to cut down on notifications. You can still allow certain apps and people through it as before, but the new intelligent breakthrough feature lets iOS proactively decide what might be important based on various factors. For example, repeated attempts to call or message you. 
Smart replies are a feature we've seen in the Android world, especially on Google's Pixel phones more than five years at this point, but they're coming to iOS 18.1 in a typically Apple way with baked in AI. The easiest way to demo this is in messages where Apple intelligence can easily pick out multiple choice options for you to directly select right above your keyboard here. And in mail, it's also possible to craft an entire response based on questions in a previous email. For a lot of people, this could just be a neat time saver, but if you have difficulty typing or English isn't your first language, it could also be a big help. Photos is one of the apps that's gotten the biggest overhaul in iOS 18, and in the 18.1 beta, we're seeing even more Apple intelligence features coming to life in one of the company's most important apps. That's in addition to the many big visual changes that we'd already seen in the 18.0 betas. Starting in 18.1 then, you can search using natural language, for example, describing things or people in a photo or video you're looking for, and you'll get predictive options to add chunks to your search as you type, based on the things Apple Intelligence has identified in the subset of photos that already match your search. A pretty neat related feature here has to do with videos. Not only will it identify objects and people in videos, but it can also highlight exactly where in the footage they appear, in this blue area when you open the video. Memory movies are also getting the AI treatment in iOS 18.1. In this section here, you can simply type or speak a description of what you want to create a movie of, and the Photos app will do the rest. Because this is all handled on device, it'll take a little while to process, but you're treated to this neat little animation while it does so, showing the photos, objects, places, and people it's processing to create your movie. And once it's done, just like any other memory movie, you can then customize it with various filters and background music. Of course, this is only a tiny slice of what's eventually going to be coming in Apple Intelligence. ChatGPT integration, for example, is still missing. That was much discussed back at WWDC. Image Playground and Gemmoji are also nowhere to be seen. And although the new look Photos app is slowly starting to come into focus, some of the more ambitious features there like object removal are yet to be released. So as usual, Apple wasn't first to AI on smartphones, or on any platform for that matter. You can definitely pick out some of these features and say that Google was there first. But the next battleground for computing platforms is going to be all about building AI into the OS at a deep level, and Apple's made a solid start here based on what we can see in this first beta. So it'll be interesting to see how things shape up between the iPhone 16 launch and the wider iOS 18 release with Apple Intelligence, expected towards the end of 2024. So share your thoughts and first impressions of this early taste of Apple Intelligence down in the comments. Stick around and subscribe for more iOS and Android coverage in the coming months. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.